Hello there and welcome to the series of videos looking to go through the content of the first year of A-level maths. Here we're working on factorising particularly with double brackets. Okay, so we'll start off with a little recap of uh, single bracket factorisation. So what you're looking for in these uh, terms here is a common factor either as a number or a letter or a combination of both. You're looking to pull out as high a number or as high a amounts of letters as possible. In this first expression here we have a common factor of 3 in both the terms. So the common factor is 3. So that needs to go at the front of a bracket. And then what you're looking to do inside the bracket is what needs to times by 3 to get the final answer of 3x plus 9. Factorising is the opposite of expanding brackets. So that's how you're going to approach this uh, answer here. What do I need inside my bracket to be able to expand it to make 3x plus 9? Well, 3 needs to times by x to make 3x, and 3 needs to times by another 3 to make the 9. So that's our final answer there. We could also have a letter that's a common factor between both the terms. In this case, it's the letter x that's in common between both terms. So the x needs to go at the front. And then what do I need to times x by to make x squared? Well, that's an x. And what do I need to times x by to make minus 5x? And that's minus 5. It could be a combination of letters and numbers. And we want to pick as high a number as possible here. So I can see here that 2, yeah, 2 would go into both of them. But that's not the highest number. I think as well 4 would go into both of these expressions, as would an x as well. So we need 4x as our common factor here, and then we need to put that at the front of a bracket and think what do we need to times 4x by to make 8x squared plus 20x. Okay, we could have something a little more complex like this, so we are going to look for a number first. Um, I think 3 will be our common factor here. In terms of the x's, well, we're going to have an x times x here. And we're just going to have a single x here, so our common factor is just going to be an x. And in terms of the y's, we're going to have a y here, and we're going to have y times y here. So a common factor between both of the terms is just a single y here. So the common factor is 3, 3 from the 9 and the 15. x, because a single x can go into both of these two expressions, and a single y, because a single y can go into both of these expressions here. So that's going to go at the front of a bracket, and then we need to think, what do we have left over? Well, to make the 9, I need to times 3 by 3. And to make the x squared, I've already got one of my x's. I've got another x that I need to multiply by, so that's going to go inside the bracket. For the 15xy squared, I've got 3 already, so I need to times by 5. I've got enough x's already, so I don't need to times by any more. But I do need an extra power of y to make it y squared, so I need to times by y on that 5 as well. Okay, final one here. So we're going to get 3x here, and that goes at the front of a bracket. And what do we need to times the 3x by to make our term at the front here? Okay, so moving on to factorising quadratics. So just a reminder of expanding brackets, here we're going to get x squared plus 2x plus another 1x, that makes 3x, and 2 times the 1 makes a 2. So factorising, we're going to be going back from this step here up to this step up here. So just so you've noticed, and so we make it super clear, the 3x is formed by adding the 2 and the 1 together. So that's a clue as to how we're going to get this uh, factorised bracket here. And also the 2 is um, multi the multiplication of these two terms here as well. So it's really important that we get these two values right um, at, the, at the back of our brackets. This is, what we, this is the problem that we're going to face here. Another one like this, so just to show you again, um, if it's x minus 5x plus 3, then we're going to get this as our expanded bracket. So how do we go back from here to here? Well, we're going to need to t add these two numbers here and here to make minus 2x. And we're going to need to times these two numbers 
to make minus 15 x minus 15. So if this question was, uh, if it was plus 5 and minus 3, this would be a positive here. So it's really important what sign goes in front of your values. Okay, so looking at this question here, remember this middle term here is what we need to add to make, and this back term here is what we need to multiply to make. So let's think of the pairs of numbers that we could have inside a double bracket that will make 12 when we multiply, but minus 7x when we add. So let's think of all these pairs of numbers that we could have. We could have 3 and 4, or minus 3 and minus 4, because remember, we could have a double negative that will multiply to make this plus 12. We could have 12 and 1, minus 12 and 1, or also 6 and 2, and minus 6 and minus 2. Let's just check which pair of these will add together to make minus 7. And it's this term here, so x minus 3, x minus 4 is going to be our final answer here. Okay, so that is how you factorise. We're going from what we have at the top here to this double bracket expression down here. Okay, let's have another go then. So remember, it's add to make the middle term, that's 10x here, and multiply to make the back term, that's 16 here. So let's think of the pairs of numbers that we could get to times together to make 16. Remember, we could also have double negatives in here. And then we need to add these pairs of numbers together and see which number makes 10. So that's the 2 and the 8. So our answer here is going to be x plus 2, x plus 8. A more tricky one now because we have to make them add to make minus x and multiply to make minus 20. Now the only way we can get two numbers to multiply to make a negative if is one of them is positive and one of them is negative. So when we're thinking about our pairs, one of them always needs to be positive and one of them needs to be negative. And they could be the other way around as well. So think about that when you're deciding upon your pairs. Now let's look at these pairs of numbers. Notice that all these pairs of numbers can multiply to make minus 20. And which pair of this can add to make minus 1 as well? Well, it's be the 4 and the minus 5. So our answer here is x plus 4 and x minus 5 when we put these expressions in. You can always check your answer, remember, by expanding the brackets, and that should give you your question. Okay. So, what we have here is... Um, so we need to be able to factorise this here. So the two numbers in the brackets must be multiplying to make the c, the 8 at the end here, and they must add together to make the b here, the 6. And in this case here, we know that 4 times 2 is 8, and 4 add 2 is 6. So this is our final answer here. So this equation only works when there's just an x squared at the front of our expression here. So we could do exactly the same thing here as well. So what pairs of numbers uh, will multiply to make minus 5 and add to make minus 4? Well, in this case here, minus 5 and plus 1 will times together to make minus 5, and minus 5 add 1 will make minus 4. There is a little bit of trial and error to this. If you maybe have suggested that x plus 5 and x minus 1 was a solution, then just check your answer by expanding it. We're going to get x squared, great, 5x and minus x, that'll make 4x. We don't want that, we want minus 4x. So that is not going to be an answer. Move on to try another pair of numbers. Okay, this term here is a little bit of a tricky one and generally catches people out because there aren't three expressions. Notice back here we've got one, two, three expressions, so it's easy to say that one's multiply, that one's add, and this one just means x is at the front of both brackets. With this one here, we've got nothing in the middle. So that effectively means that for our term in the middle, we need to make this add together to make a zero. So what two numbers will multiply to make minus 25 
that add together to make a zero. Well, in this case here, it's a classic example of difference of two squares. The square root of 25 is 5, and we need 1 on the positive and 1 on the negative. Okay. So this one here as well. This one is very similar to a difference of two squares one. We've got a 2x and 2x here to make the 4x squared. And we've got a minus 9y squared here. So that'll be a plus 3y and a minus 3y. Okay, this time here, what we've got is something where we can remove a common factor out of this expression first before we go ahead and try a two bracket factorization. When you're factorizing, I would always look first for a common factor first. So the first thing you do is look for a common factor. And then the second thing you need to do if you can't find any common factors is try two brackets. In this case, we're going to go through both of these checklists. So the first thing we could do is pull out a factor of 5, because 5 is in common between both of these two terms. And then now we're going to go through the um, difference of two squares. So that's going to be x plus 3 and x minus 3. OK, so going back, and now what we'll do is we'll look at um, what we need to do when we're in a case of a 2x at the front of a bracket. Now, just remember from our box method, that when we multiply out our brackets, in this case, because there's a 2 here, that 4 is going to get doubled. So in this case here, it's not just going to be as easy as thinking, well, two numbers times together to make a 12, that's 3 and 4, and add together to make, well, in this case, it would be 7, but this answer here will actually be 11, because the 2, the 4 here, has actually been doubled because it's expanding with a 2x here. Okay, so let's try and factorize this thing here. We know we've got a 2x squared here, so what we're going to have is an answer of 2x and x to start off our brackets. And we need to think of the numbers that are now going to go here and here. They need to times together to make minus 3 and add together to make minus 5x. So let's think of the pairs of numbers that we could have that times together to make minus 3 first. Minus 3 and 1 and 3 and minus 1. But remember, when we expand them, one of these numbers is going to be doubled and the other number is going to stay the same on the coefficients of x. So let's think about doubling which number here. So when we double the minus 3, let's say we put the minus 3 in this expression here, that's going to have to be doubled, and the 1 would just stay as it is. So we'd get here uh, minus 3x and plus the 1x, and that will make minus 5x, so I hope that that comes out to be the answer. So good, in this case here we've got 2x plus 1 and x minus 3. Now this here doesn't follow that nice rule where the two numbers will add together to make the middle one. Notice here because that 2x and the minus 3, when we expand, is going to give us a minus 6x, and the x here is going to give us a total of minus 5x. So it's a bit more tricky to factorise um, quadratic expressions where there's a number in front of the x squared. Let's have another go at it then. So remember, we're times in to make 11, but remember, one of those numbers is going to have to be doubled and then add it together and we'll make 13. So what two pairs of numbers will times together to make 11? Well, 11 and 1, or minus 11 and minus 1. And let's think about which number will be doubled. And then add that together to make a 13. And in this case here, it's going to be the 11 and the 2. So what needs to happen is the 1 needs to go in the opposite bracket to the 2x, so that these two can times together and then the 11x will multiply together here. So in that case here, we're going to get 13x out of these two expansions here, which is just what we want.
Okay, let's have a go through one more because these are pretty tricky. So we need to times together to make minus 4. But this time, one of them is going to have to be tripled. And then the other one will stay the same and add together to make minus 11. So let's think about our pairs of numbers. So it would be 2 and minus 2, or minus 4 and 1, or 4 and minus 1. Okay, so let's think about which two of these pairs could be doubled. And remember, they're going to add together to make minus 11x. I think in this case here, it's going to be the minus 12 and 1. So we're going to have these two values in our brackets. And remember, we're going to need to triple this minus 4 term. So that needs to go in the other bracket to the 3. So in this case here, it's going to be 3x times minus 4. That will make minus 12x. And then the 1 times the x here is going to give us minus 11x. So that will then give us our minus 11x that we're looking for in that question there. Okay, so you need lots and lots of practice at this, so pause the video and have a go at some of these questions. Okay, well done for pausing the video and having a go at these questions. Let's have a go at them together now. So, single bracket factorization first. So, always go through a checklist of common factors. And then the second thing on your checklist is two brackets. So common factors first, I think we've got a 2 in common here and an x in common as well. Now what needs to go inside my bracket to make 6x squared? Well I need to times by 3 to make the 6 and we need an extra power on that x to make it an x squared. Uh, and the last part here, we've already got 2 and we've already got the x. So all we need is just a little placeholder there. So minus 1 will go in there so that we can times 2x by something to make minus 2x. Okay, in this case here, look for common factors first. So no common factors, so we'll try two brackets. Okay, so going through the pairs of numbers, so we'll try 10 and 4. Uh, so we need a negative here, don't we? So minus 10 and 4, nope. 10 and minus 4, does that add together to make 3x? Nope. Um, what about 5 and 8? 5 and minus 8 we'll try first. Uh, does that add together to make 3x? Nope. Uh, but what about minus 5 and 8? That works. So the answer here is x minus 5 and x plus 8 because that will expand to give us this expression here. Okay, moving to the more tricky ones down here. Common factor first, no common factor here. So what we're going to need now is a 3x in one bracket and an x in another bracket. So let's try putting different terms in these brackets here and seeing if we expand to make an 8. So let's try a 4 and a 2 first. So that will be 2 times the 3 will give us 6 and 4 times the x here will give us a 4x. So that will give us... 10x, won't it? Oh, perfect. My first try has worked. So it's 3x plus 4 and x plus 2. Notice how if I'd have tried it the other way round, I'd have had to have tripled the 4 when I expanded my brackets. So I'd have got 12, add the 2, and that would have given me 14x, which is not what I wanted. I'd wanted 10x. Okay, and the fourth question here, look for common factors first. So in this expression here, I notice we've got a common factor of x. So it'd be x squared minus 9. And then this one's a difference of two squares, isn't it? So because both of these terms are square numbers, I can write this as one positive and one negative. And that will expand to give us our top term here. Right. Factorising quadratics is a really important topic. If you haven't got it, just do as many questions as you can until you feel like you've got it. There's tons of questions in the textbook and I'm sure there are other places you can find questions as well. Okay, thanks for watching.